There's three matchups that I'm looking at that are going to be keys for these games. One is going to be RJ Barrett versus DeMar DeRozan. We saw last season, you know, that was always the guy RJ was guarding. I mean, he even had a good, he had a good defensive possession on DeMar when it came for that. It was a first win against the Chicago Bulls last season. Mm. Guarded DeMar really well. RJ's defense has been a little lackluster this season, like unlike last year. I don't know if it's because he put it, put on weight, trying to be a little bit more stronger, be a little bit more brolic as we would say in New York. <laughs> but I don't know, man. Uh, that's, that's the guy who I'm seeing right now is going to be for that matchup. <clears throat> Another matchup is definitely going to be Mitchell Robinson versus uh, Vucevic because centers, man, I want to see Mitch. I know he's usually had trouble guarding offensive driven centers and Vooch is a good offensive player so that's another match i'm looking at for this game and then the last one the last one i'm looking at is none other than quentin grimes versus zach levine bro because mm. zach levine as i talked as i talked about earlier very athletic he's twitchy he can get to the rim with ease and quentin grimes has i think the best athleticism and perimeter defense to keep up with zach levine those are my three key matchups for the starting rotations what do you think about them and is there any other matchups that you're looking at for this game maybe the the patrick williams revenge game after you know mitch took him out for uh the season <laughs> last year <laughs> oh brother bulls fans were attacking Knicks fans <laughs> left and right for that one sheesh it was an accident my man it was an accident <laughs> no i th i think you nailed it and, and honestly i think the matchup i'm most afraid of is the vooch mitchell robinson matchup i feel like mitchell robinson always gives the bulls a ton of problems just with his length defensively uh his his rebounding um and his rim gravity you know and especially when you, you have you know playmakers like the knicks have now and i i think he's a guy that always gives me the like oh we got to deal with this guy again so i don't know hopefully the bulls mm -hmm. get him into a little bit of foul trouble uh but otherwise yeah those, those are the matchups right i mean they're grimes is is this new defense that the Knicks are playing, it, it feels like he's one of the guys that has spearheaded it. And um, with Zach, you know, he's playing well now, but he still is, you know, recovering from that knee injury. Maybe that slowed down version, Quentin Grimes can give him a lot of trouble. And, and when guys play Zach, you know, really tight, there are times where he tends to kind of force it a little bit and, and try to do mm -hmm. a little bit too much settle. I think Quentin Grimes is definitely has a potential to, uh, you know, force him into some tough shots. So I definitely think those are the matchups. I think DeRozan, I'm at the point where I just feel so comfortable with whoever guards him. It doesn't matter. I think he's, he gets to his spots. He does whatever he wants. And, you know, if the Knicks are going to guard DeRozan just straight up one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with RJ, I feel fine about that matchup as a Bulls fan. But I think the other two matchups do have the potential to kind of, you know, bring the the worst out of both of those guys. And, you know, I, I think that it's like, hopefully Andre Drummond doesn't have to come in and, and play like, you know, big minutes against Mitchell Robinson. Although Andre Drummond, I mean, Drum Drummond signing. has given Mitch his problems in the past. I'm not going to yeah, lie. You know, he's a big guy. So I, I guess this year it is good that they do have that, that option that they have a big guy to lean in, uh, lean on like that. But those are the three key matchups for sure. Yeah, you know, like I look at it, and you talked about the Knicks uh, surging defense right now. Quentin Grimes being one of the the spearheads of that. It's also Miles McBride, Emmanuel. Yeah, quickly those those trio right there have really has have really changed the perimeter defense because the Knicks were allowing so many three point shooting. You know, now the Knicks are now are leading over these last four games. They're number one in defensive net in defensive rating. So those guys alone, plus Mitch being a safety valve you know, and cleaning up anyone who's trying to attack the lane. That's been just, it's been game changing, honestly, watching this type of defense, but it'll be a good test because the Chicago Bulls over the last four games are right now second in the NBA with the amount of points that you've been putting up, even though you're two and two, your guys are putting up a lot of points. So it'll be interesting to see how the Knicks are going to be able to handle this because look, we're, 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 we're a good scoring team, but we're not a good three points shooting team. Like a lot mm. of our points are in the paint and yes, they're effective doing that. But when you see the Chicago bulls who are shooting 41% right now from three over the last four games, that that's going to be a good challenge. And we're going to really get some, a true test here to see how, where this perimeter defense stands. But the next part I got to ask, man, is the, is the battle of the benches because in the past, it's always the Knicks. We're looking towards our second unit. 
with being led by Derrick Rose, right? It's been Derrick Rose and Manu quickly, Obi Toppin, uh, throw in whoever, whether it was Alec Burks, right, uh, as as that guy on your wing with Taj Gibson and Nerlens Noel or whoever, right? And now I'm looking at this second unit, and I'm very I'm, I'm intrigued because we don't really have that type of offensive pr offensive presence as we now once have. Now it's more defense oriented, and what Tibbs has now done is staggered either Rand or RJ to be with that second unit to give them that scoring punch, as well as Quentin Grimes to some extent. Uh, not Quentin Grimes for a, a scoring punch, but just some more defensive presence. How do you feel about? the bull second unit going against the Knicks new defensive oriented second unit. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll see regarding the health of, you know, some of the guys that would either be leading their bench or maybe starting. I think that's one thing, but uh, this year I, the bulls bench has been phenomenal, honestly, you know, I mean, Goran Dragic has mm -hmm. uh, looked terrific. Uh, Andre Drummond has been really good and gives them something that they don't have as, you know, with, uh, as far as rim gravity goes, you know, Kobe white is who he is. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wish that, you know, Kobe white for cam reddish. I don't know who says no, but <laughs> we're at this point of the, we're at this point of the show. Kobe. White. <laughs> yeah. You know, but again, like it, Javante green, I, he's a guy that could swing a game with his play off the bench. You know, he is such a ball of energy, especially at the UC that, you know, he's a guy that all of a sudden you look at the box score and he's got, you know, 11 points, seven rebounds, three assists, two steals and a block. And you're like, what just happened? And he's, you know, on like a two breakaway dunks that has the UC rocking. So I, the bench has in a lot of ways, um, you know, sparked the, the positives for the bulls this year. So if, if this team, if Caruso can come back and he's actually playing, and, uh, you know, whether that is him off the bench or IO off the bench, it gives them, you know, another guy to kind of add to this team, um, that, you know, gives them a, a shot at closing gaps that, you know, maybe defensively the starters have, have gotten the, the bulls off to with their slow starts. Yeah. And, and you saying that, and I'm thinking like for, for now we'll get the Knicks, right. And we're not, we're without Obi Toppin right now. We're, we're using, and Isaiah Hartenstein and a Jericho Sims front court right now, having Hartenstein at the four, Jayco at the five. Uh, and we also have, you know, just quickly induced being those guys off the bench. So scoring wise, it's been all up and down. So it will be, it'll be interesting to see which team gets it going first. Cause I feel like either, either one of these benches, that's what it just takes one player. I think is going to be quickly. Who's going to be that guy off the bench that for us needs to get going. Who would be that, who would be on your side for for the offense to get going coming off the bench? Uh, I mean, uh, if Kobe White has one of those games, uh, mm -hmm. and which he's had Makes against sense. against the Knicks, you know, yes, similarly, you know, guy who can catch fire. But I, the Bulls bench, I think what I like about them is that they kind of do it collectively. You know, they mm -hmm. don't have to kind of rely on one guy to get hot or not to you know kind of perform. I think that's the benefit of having vets like you know Drogic, like. Um, Drummond uh, come off the bench a uh, guy like Javante Green who's going to bring energy regardless if he's hitting shots or not so I, I don't know if there's one guy outside of Kobe who you could be like oh he's gonna go you know he he can go off and swing it I think for the Bulls the bench is what brings their defensive energy that maybe they don't necessarily always get from you know their quote-unquote big three mm, okay well this could be a good matchup Corey this will be a good yeah, matchup it Before always is it it always is. It's always interesting. So and look, we got that old historic rivalry as well, Knicks versus yes. Chicago versus Bulls. So it'll be a good one for this week, facing each other twice. But before we get you out of here, what do you think the final score is for both games? Oof. Uh I think it's got the potential to be a real defensive uh battle. Let's say 10 105, 102. I'm gonna go Chicago in the first game. And then let's go. Let's go 103 to 97, New York in in the second game. Ooh, look at this! You're giving you're giving the Knicks. You're giving coming on this show. You're not good. You're not even going to take I, this week. I respect the Knicks, man. I respect okay. the Knicks. I, I you 
what was their over under this year? Was it like 37, something like that? Again, like 37, 38 and a half, somewhere. somewhere yeah, I was like, come on. Like, they're good. They're good. They're, they're a fine team. <laughs> you know, like, that's the word. It's a, it's a fine. We got a fine team over here. Okay? They're a fine, a fine team. team. We're a fine team. They're a professional basketball team. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, on the other hand, I don't think I could be that 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 gracious to give the Chicago Bulls a, a win this week, just because, look, <laughs> man, just the just the hatred, the animosity, I I, I can't do it. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the sweep this week. Okay. I'm gonna take the sweep for the Knicks. They're gonna go on a I know everyone's listening to a six game winning streak. Holy cow! Wow, that'll be that'll be something. But I feel like the Knicks with this new improved defense, they're they're doing something special right now. Is this will be the test though? This will be the test. I'm gonna see. I'm with you though. It's gonna be a low scoring game. I'm going to take the first one to be, I think it will be, I'm going to go 105. I like the 105. I like the 105, 101 Knicks first one. I think the next one where they see each other is going to be absolutely garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be, I think we're going to see like, oof. I know teams are scoring high. I'm, I'm going to go 101. 197 Knicks again. Okay. Yeah, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm, that's where I'm ending this. But, Corey, thank you so much for hopping on this show. 